Hey guys, Taylor here from Simply Betta. I am getting plants today for my Fangorn Forest Aquascape. I agonized over the plant choices to suit this Lord of the Rings themed aquarium. And there are some suggestions from viewers that are like really, really obvious choices that I should have thought about. So good job on being smarter than me. And I am so embarrassed about one plant, which is so obvious, I am mortified that I didn't think about it. I will be planting everything today, all of my aquatic plants. And I'm gonna be using a method that I have never tried before. Oh my God, that's so good. This beautiful new tank and stand from Custom Aquariums is going to be the new centerpiece of my home. And these plants are truly going to be what turns this hardscape into Fangorn Forest. <sighs> Waiting for the FedEx man to deliver a package when you're really, really excited about it is agony. He's gonna be here really, really soon, I just know it. Look at this huge box. Wow. Today's video is, as always, sponsored by Brightwell Aquatics, who do so much for me. But I have another sponsor today, Tropica Plants. Thank you so much, Tropica, for sending me a huge box of aquatic plants so I can fill up my Lord of the Rings Fangorn Forest Aquascape. Yeah. I don't think I've held this many aquatic plants at one time. Let's unbox them. I need a big table. I had to push my dining room table over here just for good measure. Now I can unbox it. This is big. I'm about to unbox the biggest box of aquatic plants I've ever seen in my whole life. Wow. Packing list. Wow. I was really nervous about these getting shipped to me because it is freezing cold snowstorm weather outside. Please be okay. I'm glad they were wrapped in foil. This is so many plants. I don't even know where to start. Okay, okay, okay. Please be okay. I'll just start pulling stuff out. First, I'm pulling out some potted plants. It's a Bacopa Monieri Compact, which I'm hoping is going to be a nice, petite little stem plant that stays fairly small. Those look beautiful. They don't look hurt by freezing or frost. Okay, that's a really good sign. That's cute and little. The next on the list. <gasps> Lagenandra Meboldii Red. A plant I don't have any experience with, but I thought looked really neat in the pictures. This is an experiment with Lagenandra meboldii. It doesn't seem like they're affected by how cold it was during shipping. Tropica did do express shipping for me, which probably saved all my plants. Look at all those. We have some more potted plants coming up. <gasps> Ooh, Anubius gracilis. This is a variety of Anubias I've never seen before. Do you see that pretty arrow-shaped leaf? How pretty is that? I actually was planning on getting Anubias Nana and Anubias Nana Petite for this tank, but I couldn't find any. They were totally out. Wow, did I get too much? Look at all this. You know, I thought Anubias Gracilis was going to be a little bit smaller. Did I make a bad choice? No. Next, I have some tissue cultures. A bunch of tissue cultures! Look at all this tissue culture weeping moss. Beautiful. A lot of you guys suggested weeping moss, and lucky for you, I got it. Bucephalandra bukit kalam. It's a little green bucephalandra. Then I have a row of hygrophila pinnatifida. Please don't come after me for mispronouncing uh, plant names. What is this? An entire platter of Bucephalandra ketagang. Look at it! So much beautiful ketagang. This is a type of Bucephalandra that is very dark. It's like a purpley brown color. I am so happy to be receiving it because I really wanted some purpley brownish dark plants. Yes. Cryptparva, I love Cryptparva. I also have some Lobelia cardinalis mini. Funny story about that one later. And this is Heteranthria zostrifolia. A platter of Marcelia hirsuta. A bunch of you thought I made a really good choice with the Marcelia. And then I have some Monte Carlo. I like Monte Carlo a lot. Here's the last one. It's a platter of Christmas moss. Ah! 
Wow. It's so many plants. If you're watching this and you're feeling a little overwhelmed at how many plants this is, um, don't be. You do not need to start a planted tank with this many plants, okay? So don't feel overwhelmed by that. Part of the fun of aquascaping can be to just start out with a few plants and then you trim them, you propagate them all over the place, you grow them more and more and more and you end up with a lush tank full of plants. But I wanted to start out with a, with a tank that had a really good amount of plant mass in it. I like my instant gratification. Don't feel discouraged by this. This is a special occasion. Oh, it's so much. Yep, it's gonna take a while. Oh dear. Tissue culture plants are pretty cool. They're little cuttings of plants which are put into a growth medium and sealed in this little sterile cup where they grow into a perfect bunch of clean little plants. This keeps them free of algaes, snails, or pests. And it's a nice way to start a new tank. Cleaning them is pretty easy. I rinse the gel out over the sink and then I spend time dividing the plants up into easy to plant clumps and then I set them aside. I'm already tired. I've done this much and I still have this much more to go and an entire box of potted plants down here that I need to prep. Whew. I have to sit down to do the rest of these. My feet are getting tired. This is an entire tray of Bucephalander Ketagang and it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Don't make jokes, Taylor, you're not funny. Entire tray of Bucephalander Ketagang. All right, next I'm gonna do the Buce Bukit Kalam. So it's definitely greener and brighter than the Ketagang. Ketagang's a little more purple. I like the purple. That is a lovely little plant. Next I'll do my moss. This is so pretty. God, I love moss. Weeping moss grows in a more downward way, especially for the upper parts of the tree. I want lots of dangling danglies. Look at that, it's like a lawn. Oh, it's so beautiful. Mmm, smells good too. Mossy. This is like the most time consuming part, it's just prepping your plants. Jeez. At this rate, I'm not gonna be able to plant my plants until late tonight. I have to go pick up my kids and then it's just too hard to get any work done with them around. You know how it goes. Oh my God. Why does it seem like the most time consuming part of this whole process is just prepping your plants? I had to eat lunch and I'm not even done yet. Look at this box. I need an assistant or something. Submit your applications to be Simply Betta's assistant. As soon as possible. All right, I feel a little better after I ate. <laughs> it was creamy chicken soup that I made myself. It's delicious. Cleaning the pots usually isn't all that bad. You just sort of tear open the rock wool and you just try not to harm the root structure. You just gently pull it out. You might have to pick around on the roots a little bit to get the rest of the rock wool off. The Lognandra Meboldii red is pretty cool. It doesn't look red, but remember, plants can change a lot once they get submersed and in really good conditions. It's pretty neat. I like how dark they are anyways. I've lost all my time for the whole morning and the whole afternoon just prepping plants. I'm just gonna cover everything up, moisten it. I have my little mister, I have my paper towels. That's how I keep things nice and not drying out. This might just be a planting project that takes me all night. I'm way too lazy to move the table back where it belongs, so we're eating dinner here tonight. No! In front of the fish tank. No! Oh, come on, it'll be fun. I'm not moving it. I'm back and it's late. You know what that means. The kids are in bed. I have a fresh pot of coffee. I've got my plastic wrap. I've got my RO water. Got my plants. First thing I do is just saturate the substrate. It's gonna make it easier to get my plants in. It's gonna help the roots grab a little bit more. It's just easier if it's already a little bit soaked. Everything has been leading up to this moment. Planting. I set aside my entire night for this part. First, I added my Marsilia hirsuta, which is my main ground cover plant. I planted it pretty densely in the foreground. It's slow growing, so I'm glad I got so much of it. 
the Laganandra meboldii I envision behind my main foreground trees. Like a dark, bushy plant of some kind separating the foreground from the background. I'm excited to see how this plant colors up once I flood the tank. Please be dark and please be red. Hygrophila pinnatifida is next. This is a pretty cool looking stem plant which has these skinny, jagged, reddish green leaves. Monte Carlo will be in patches towards the back as a smaller ground cover plant. Lobelia cardinalis is a plant I chose because I really like it, uh, totally not realizing the tie-in to the Lord of the Rings series. Lobelia Sackville Baggins is a minor character in Lord of the Rings. She's a greedy relative of Bilbo Baggins. She's known for stealing his nice silverware while he was out adventuring. And she was really unhappy that he was aging so slowly since she wanted to inherit Bag End from him after he died, all to herself. But joke's on her because the One Ring grants its keeper an unnaturally long life. Ha! So I've added a lot of my ground plants, including some Crypt Parva here and there. Now, I'm going to add my Bucephalandra. This beautiful Ketagang is going front and center. It's such a pretty purpley plant. I'm using a gel super glue to attach the buce to my trees, just wherever it makes sense for an opportunistic little plant to grow. I forgot to mention I got another kind of Bucephalandra, Mini Catherine, to be in the back. It had a rough time during shipping, so I'm just crossing my fingers and hoping it makes it. So let's move on to all my moss. Moss is going to be a huge part of this tank. I actually got a few more kinds of mosses. I got a Fissidens fontanus. Cat, get! The cat keeps knocking over all my plants, and this is now my anti-cat device. The reason I actually got all these mosses is that they are incredibly nutrient dense, and they make a really great smoothie. Oh my God, that's so good. That's a good smoothie. Just kidding. We are going to be planting this beautiful aquatic moss by actually throwing it in the blender. My instincts are telling me no, but the internet is telling me yes. Yes! Do it, Taylor! Do it! Oh my god. Oh. Wow. Now I'm gonna filter out all my moss particles and clean it up because it just got everywhere. I also got myself some Fissidens fontanus and mini Pelia moss, which I rapidly blended. Don't tell my family I'm making moss smoothies in our blender. I blended that moss up so nice and fine, and now I have some really lovely moss smoothies right over here to my side. Christmas moss, weeping moss smoothie, Fissidens nobilis smoothie, mini Pelia. It's time to paint it onto my wood using these. These might seem like really fancy paintbrushes, but one of my relatives is a really famous oil painter and let me just take a bunch of her brushes. I didn't get nice, nice brushes just to paint moss on, promise. This is plain sour yogurt. My favorite kind of yogurt, I love yogurt. I could eat plain sour yogurt all day long, just like Terry Crews from Brooklyn Nine-Nine. This is just like a little half teaspoon spoon, and I'm gonna put it into these. So I'm just gonna mix it up all nice and delicious. Moss is pretty cool. Even if it's chopped up into tiny, tiny little bits, it can regenerate from all those tiny little fragments that you've created. That is why you're able to blend it up and paint it onto stuff and it doesn't die. I'll take off my plastic wrap lid. The cool part about this method is that your moss can get a really solid grip onto your hardscape. There are so many more points now for it to get a solid attachment when it's all cut up like this. The moss can reach into all the little nooks and crannies of the wood and rocks and look really natural. I put the weeping moss in places where I wanted moss to droop down. Christmas moss is my next one I'll do. This is gonna be my main moss that I'm putting around like on the trunks of my trees. But I'm not just gonna coat the, every single square inch of these beautiful pieces of ghost wood that I have in here. I want the moss to be like in the shady parts of the tree to try to make it look natural, right? As natural as I can. I 
I put Christmas moss in a lot of places. I used a lot of it. I'm surprised. I didn't think I'd use that much. I did my best to nestle it into cracks and crevices. Now I'll move on to my Fissidens smoothie, my Fissidens Fontanus. I don't have as much of this, but I don't think I need as much of it. It's more of an accent. This is gonna be going into my background because it's a more petite plant, I think. Mostly in the background and just peppered in the foreground a little bit. My last one, mini Pelia moss. Oh, this has taken forever. I think I'm finally to the point where I just need to stop and let it dry start. I've painted a whole lot of moss tonight. I feel like I've had enough for a little while. I've noticed a problem I'm a little concerned about, especially for all this moss. My tank is drying out really fast. Even when I have the plastic wrap on, like I feel like things are getting dry too fast and I'm afraid it's gonna suck all the life out of my moss. And I can't just sit down here and mist it every 30 minutes, you know? I got stuff to do! I have an idea though. I have something in the fish room that I haven't used yet, ever. Um, I have an atomizer. Picked this up at Aquashala for fun. It was actually going to go on my evil driftwood tank and then I just forgot. I think if I can make a fun mist, maybe that can eliminate the need to manually mist it so much for three weeks straight, you know? Okay, I've never used an atomizer before. My plan is I can put it in a cup, right? And maybe put it on a timer. Yeah. I plugged it in. This is what's happening. It's, oh, it's splashing. Okay, this is what it looks like when you use it right. I just need to get it up a little higher. This, why didn't I think about this before? Look, see that mist? Oh, this is gonna be so cool. Oh, <laughs> this is awesome. I've never had one of these before. Look, that mist swirling around. Oh my goodness. Planting takes so much time. That's a lot of plants. I don't think I've ever planted that many plants. It doesn't look like a whole lot now, but I'm going to give it about three or four weeks. That moss is going to start to establish. It's gonna to start to grow a little bit on my tree trunks and just all over the place and I'll be able to fill it. I'm really excited to flood this tank and to really like get it cycled and, and get the CO2 set up and get some of my very first inhabitants, but it's just one thing at a time. This has been a project that's taken me a while to do. It's okay if it takes a few more weeks. Waiting also gives me some time to source my Cryptolutea Hobbit. In my last video where I discussed what plants I was gonna be planning on, um, I missed a very important plant that was really obvious because it was a plant that I had in my bag end tank, my very first Lord of the Rings themed tank. I had a beautiful little crypt called Cryptolutea Hobbit. It's Crypt Hobbit. It's like a little form of Crypt Lutea. It's cute. And I can't believe I didn't think to order it. I need it in this tank. Also, let's talk about Anubius. My original plan was to have Anubius Nana and Anubius Nana Petite and have Nana in the front and Petite in the back peppered around, but I wasn't able to get any because uh, Tropica was out. So I decided I was going to try Anubius Gracilis. Look, isn't it cute? It has this cool arrowhead leaf structure that I mentioned. I just think it's a very lovely little plant, but I'm afraid I made the wrong choice here. I was under the assumption that Anubius gracilis was a lot smaller of a plant than it is. I mean, it looks small right now, but this gets to like eight inches big, and I'm not sure if that's what I want for this tank. I think I made a mistake in ordering Anubius gracilis. Also, I think it's a good idea to not focus on green plants. That's why I have my Loganandra meboldii. It's why I have my Hygrophilia pinnatifida. And I think those are better choices for what I have in my brain. And I'm sad because I got a bunch of these and I wanna do something with them. I just can't think of what to do right now. I also got some Heteranthria zostrifolia, which is a really fluffy, green, beautiful plant but my thoughts are the same. I think it's too green. I think I'm trying to darken it down a little bit and not do as many green plants. Didn't really realize that until I got my plants in front of me. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I appreciate you following along on my Fangorn Forest Aquascape. A huge thanks to my patrons. You guys are awesome. I have a 
bunch of people who throw like a dollar at me every single month. And I really, really appreciate it over on Patreon. You guys helped me buy my CO2 canister this month, which I'll be needing for the next video. So thanks so much to my patrons. And I appreciate all the people who watch me and subscribe. Thanks to Brightwell Aquatics. Thanks to Tropical Plants for sending me all these plants. It was really nice. Have a great day and I'll see you next time.